morning and welcome to Budtown United Methodist Church. The first announcement is more so for those who are joining us online. Unfortunately, the camera is not working, so you have sound only for today. We will hopefully have it fixed for next week. So other announcements. Um, the altar flowers this week are given to the glory of God by Bob and Nellie. The coin jar for the month of August is going to support the Ukrainian people. Um, today is the last day to donate school supplies to go to the Southampton School District. And this Wednesday, August 31st, is a church council meeting at 7 p.m. in Hargrove Hall. Yay! <laughs> I might agree with that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a busy time. Um, nay. <laughs> All right, so here's the pop quiz of this week. What's happening September 18th? And where will it be? And did anybody not put it on their calendar yet? <laughs> yes, all the sign-up sheets for um, what to bring for the picnic, all color-coded. There's a salad list, a sides list, a drinks list and a desserts list. So that will be at the back um, of the uh, sanctuary if, for those who want to sign up to bring something for the 18th. Thank you. I'm glad the camera's not on because that was funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bible study update starts not this coming week or the following, it's the week after that. So it'll start Wednesday, September 14th at 9.30 a.m. in Hargrove Hall. Or if you choose to go to the evening session, that's on Thursday. So we'll start September 15th at 6.30 p.m. also in Hargrove Hall. And can I add to that? Mm -hmm. I have, the books are in. I have them if they are in need. So if you ordered a book, see Betty. They are in, and she can get you your books. All right. It looks like we have a couple of anniversaries this week. So we got Bobby and Morgan's anniversary is on the 31st, and Dorothy and Jerry Bush, your anniversary is on the 4th. Of September. Of September, but that's this week. Oh, wait, hold on a second. The 4th is next week, isn't it? Yep. All right, we'll, we'll, take, back. Back. we'll take that back. We'll sing to you next week. <laughs> <laughs> but we can still sing to Bobby and Morgan. she tries to escape from it, okay, because she's not going to announce her own birthday, Emma is going to be one. <laughs> wow. I, so well I was trying so hard to see. Oh, that's, that's why I reached over and turned my microphone on while you didn't see it. So. birthday fell being here I didn't tell anybody it was my birthday and it was actually my birthday the Sunday I was here and Shirley in all Shirley wisdom looked at me and she goes when's your birthday <laughs> and I was like first and she goes as in today and I was like yeah <laughs> this was all before the service started I'm like how did she even think to ask that so of course Everybody's getting their birthday sung to them. It's not on this handy dandy sheet at that time. And uh, <laughs> Shirley goes, Hold on, there's another one. And Pastor's going through going, That's all the ones I have. She goes, Nope. <laughs> she snitched me right out. And I haven't been able to sneak out since then. So, <laughs> so 
Well, are there any other announcements? All right, being none, if you will please stand if you wish and join for the gathering chorus of Stand By Me on page 512. Which I'm going to do on the piano. Okay. <laughs> didn't know it. Nope, didn't know that one. Please join for the call to worship. With gifts of praise, we come to worship. With heartfelt prayers, we come to worship and pray. With open minds eager to grow, we come to worship and grow this day. Please turn to page 367 in your hymnal for the hymn of praise, He Touched Me. Again, 367.
join me in the opening prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious, Gracious God, God, we come this day to present our minds and bodies to you as a holy and living sacrifice. We seek the blessings that come from the renewal of our minds. May we discern your will and come to know what is good and acceptable and perfect in your sight. Amen. Please turn to page 846 in your hymnal for the act of praise, which will be Psalms 124, again, 846. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when those rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away, the torrent would have gone over us. And then the raging waters would have gone over us. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Today's epistle lesson <coughs> can be found on pages 227 and 228 in the Pew Bible. It's from Hebrews 13, 1 through 8, 15 and 16, concluding exhortations. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Here ends our first lesson for today. God bless 
the reading of the word. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Today's gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 14, verse 1 and 7 through 14. It can be found on page 77 of your pew Bible. Please stand if you wish. Jesus at a Pharisee's house. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come up and say to you, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to the host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. 
Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now if you'll turn in your hymnals to page 2173, and we'll sing Shine, Jesus, Shine, page 2173. So, 
It's a shame we're not, the, the camera's not working, but that's okay. Um, hopefully they're listening in. Uh, this is uh, actually a phone call from Pat that I had received, and so I had to bring this about. Um, George went to his, for his annual physical, and all of his test results came back normal. Now, Dr. Smith said, George, everything looks great physically, but how are you doing mentally? and emotionally. Are you at peace with yourself? And do you have a good relationship with God? George replied, God and me are real tight. He knows I have poor eyesight, so he's fixed it so when I get up in the middle of the night, I get to go to the bathroom, poof, the light comes on. When I pee and I'm done, poof, the light goes back out when I'm done. Wow, commented Dr. Smith. That's incredible. A little while later in the day, Dr. Smith called Pat. Pat, he said, George is just fine. Physically, he's great, but I had the call because I'm in awe of this relationship with God. Is it true that he gets up during the night and poof, the light goes on? And when he's done, poof, the light goes off again? Pat exclaimed, that old fool, he's peeing in the refrigerator again. <laughs> That ain't right, is it? No shame, no shame. It, 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 it works though, it works though. So, I, I entitled this Fitting In. Fitting In. Um, I'm sure we've all had situations in our lives that have been a little uncomfortable um, sometimes you're invited to a party and you show up at the party and you know no one there. And you just don't feel like you're fitting in. Everybody knows somebody but you. You know the host, that's it. And it, it, it just, it, it, it becomes a little uncomfortable, a little awkward, to try to fit in. Sometimes you get a promotion on your job, and you haven't left the department that you've been working in, but you have gotten the promotion to where you are now the supervisor, and everyone who was once your friends and they were hanging out with you in the lunch room, and they were having a good time and telling jokes and slapping you on the back and having a great time. All of a sudden, you're the boss, and they want nothing to do with you. Bless you. <laughs> and you just don't fit in. We have to always remember that feeling of how it feels not to fit in. So now, uh, one thing that, 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 that I have praised all of the higher echelon about with Budtown, it doesn't matter who you are. When you walk through that door, you fit in. And because everyone here tries to do that because we know what it's like not to fit in. So everyone comes in as strangers, leaves as friends. Right? Everybody fits in. 
Um, when Patty and I first came here, umpteen gazillion years ago, um, we were kind of, okay, are we going to fit in? Well, yeah, because we've been here already before, right? We got to know everybody. We got to, so yes, we fit in, but it's always still, even so, we had been here. Are they going to accept this? Are we really going to fit in? I know. Yeah. <laughs> we might fit. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, why we're having a council meeting. That's why we're having a council meeting. Okay. <laughs> now I know what it's all it about. I'll have to play hooky. No, no. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> but it's horrible to go through life. Not so much worrying about if you're going to fit in, but if you are really, really going to be accepted and fit in. Jesus, in his teaching, was trying to make disciples out of everyone. And some of those disciples were like, am I really going to fit in with this crowd? Look at who is following Jesus. Prostitutes, tax collectors, Oh, those darn tax collectors. Man, I mean to tell you, talk about a bunch of sinners you now. <laughs> right? No. But uh, fishermen, all the people who were supposedly lowlifes, the scourge of the population, they're the ones that are following Jesus, becoming his disciples, and fitting in. And it was the ones that would turn around and look down their noses. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> look at this crowd that they, he's hanging with. Oh, they did. They're the ones that didn't fit in. How about that? Change tables. Change positions. Right? So it was all of those who were not the ones that were fitting in. And they resented it. They resented the fact that they were not being accepted by this group of misfits that were following the Lord, following the Master. How many of us have felt like we're misfits? Hey, Christmas is going to be coming just in a few months. I am not just a misfit. Hey, one of the best movies made, right? There you go. Okay. <laughs> they didn't fit in. But at the end, they were the heroes. So, be heroes. Let everybody in your circle, in your lives, fit in. And what a great feeling it is. It really is. To be, to fit in, to be accepted by everyone around you. Welcome to Budtown. Amen. And I hope George and Pat forgive me for that, but I just. I'm sure they will. It, 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 it just fit in. It fit in. Sure. Um, Morgan and I were like everybody for me, us feel that way when we came here. We were a little antsy to coming in and being annoyed. But I want to thank everybody and God that everybody accepts us and how we feel. Thank you for all our friends. Yes, yes and we all love you too. It's family. Exactly.
this is there are two types of churches or three but really you can sum it up in two right you've got a family church and then you have a church family now Friday I was told okay at one time this church was known as the Allen Church okay if you were not related to the Allens you didn't belong if you walked through that door and the Allens did not approve of you <laughs> You might as well turn around and walk back out the door because you're not going to. That is a family church. Now, what we have here is now a church family. We are all related through God and Christ Jesus, not through blood. And we are all accepting of each other so that if one of us is hurting, like I am right now with my hip, uh, but anyway, uh, if, if one of us is hurting, everybody is hurting. That's what it's all about, to be accepted and to be that church family. So, yeah, welcome to the family. And then we have those that come wandering in as, as visitors and then turn around and say, hey, you know what? We're going to stay. Because we feel that love. We feel that fitting in. I'm not going to throw her on the, on the spot, but uh, <laughs> Emma has testified to that. <laughs> oh, no, because it's, I'm not kissing anybody that's not going to snow. It's not going to be a Hallmark movie. <laughs> Um, but no, but it's, it's, it, see how warm and fuzzy though? Okay, there you go. Your warm and fuzzy heart. You don't even have to worry about watching a Hallmark movie the rest of the year. I, I got you covered on this one. <laughs> oh, but, so we want to, we want to pray for our, 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 are doing the work of the Lord and being a family, absolutely, and to keep our family strong through everything, including not having a camera that wants to work. That's okay. We'll get it fixed. It's technology. These things happen. But they can still listen to us, you know, and they can just picture what's going on. Yeah, okay. Imagination time. You can dance if you want. You can dance if you want to. Said, yeah, I know. I know. Kumbaya. Sing the kumbaya? Dance the kumbaya. Oh, dance the kumbaya. Okay. Uh, Betty doesn't know that one on the piano. Can't do that one today. I do know it on the other day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Do we have anyone else that we need to lift up in prayer at this time? Yeah, Judy. Mary Taylor and her son John. Yes. Um, I spoke with her the other night, and uh, she's had a rough time. Yeah, she's had a real, real tough time. And my heart goes out to her. Um, Mary's son, well, first of all, Mary has lost how many brothers in, 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 in I mean, in rapid succession? Like five, five six yeah, five or six family members have passed away. Um, and then, uh, so she's been trying to deal with that, plus dealing with her own physical ailments. And then... Um, she got a call her son from her son who has an inoperable brain bleed and 
is terminal. So it's a matter of time. Is this the second or third one now? Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're going to be working feverishly to try to find a way to stop this brain bleed. Um, but the doctors have basically told them prepare in case it doesn't. We can't, you know. So he's trying to get his mother on board with it too, saying, you know, it's going to be time. And it's going to be time soon. But the one thing that Mary did say, her son John turned around and said, well, but I'll be with Dad. So he knows where he will be. But yeah, we want to keep her and, and, and John in our prayers. Um, we need to keep Margaret in our prayers too. She's still um, battling, fighting. But uh, although she has also said that she would like to come back sometime, and whenever she's ready, our arms are open. You know, anytime she anytime she wants to come back, come on back. And you know, we're here every Sunday. Yeah, I know the traveling time just doesn't want to cut into it, does it? But. <laughs> You know, you, you're not strangers. <laughs> you're, you're, you're home again. <laughs> so, but we're glad to have you in and safe travels when you, when you head back, traveling mercies to you. And uh, God will protect you all the way. We have faith in that. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He'll be all right. He'll be okay. I'll do a secret blessing on him. He'll be all right. <laughs> um, for those that don't know, Henry is an 11 year old uh, terrier mix who's 65 pounds and wants to be a lap dog. But, and he's a great dog, you know. But, um, Yesterday, he jumped off the bed and walked out onto the linoleum floor, slipped a little, and started leaning his head one way and favoring one paw. So we had Orson's or uh, Solomon's uh, birthday up in Dover, PA yesterday, so we had to go up. And, and then when we came back, Henry was just like, yeah, no. And he flopped down and cried. And it was like, okay, this is not, this is not our dog. This is not Henry. Anyone who knows Henry, you know that's not him. So off to the emergency vet we went. Uh, and here they think, or they're pretty sure because she did a good, exa <coughs> excuse me, good examination on him. When she got up around the neck area, he cried, flopped down, rolled over, don't touch me anymore, I'm done. He does, he, she says, okay, common in these dogs. He's got, she thinks it's a pinched nerve. So, $450 later, and all this medication and shots, and uh, we're still waiting for the old Henry to come back. He's, you know, it takes some time. So there's where we were. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's, that's for Henry, you know, that's what's going on with Henry, anyway. So anyone who's got pets, you know the panic, and, and, and so, yeah, um, yeah, it'd be all right. And Kathy, you had your...
Yeah. Well, now Todd was being flown over to Germany, you would say. Military transport? Okay. Right, right. Okay. Throwing it, throwing it in the odds in favor. And then, yeah, and then, Linda, we just pray that she's going to. I wish she would just give us the spirit of God. Yeah. She just said so much, like every other person. Yeah. And it's so real. We'll just pray for comfort. Pray for comfort and an easy passing. We know a good vet. <laughs> I can say I know a good doctor, but I know a good vet. <laughs> Let's go to our let's go to our Lord in prayer. Oh loving and gracious God, you you have taught us many lessons. Some that we didn't even know we were being taught. But you have shown us the way to fit in, to be in communion with everyone around us. Now, many times we are still, we are still holding people away because maybe they're different than we are. Maybe they look different, speak different, but that doesn't mean that they can't be in our group. And we need to accept them. We need to accept those who are different than we are, and let them feel the love of fitting in, just like the love we feel here when we fit in. God, thank you for giving us a place to fit in, even in your kingdom, where we know that Someday, we will be there with you. And you will show us our seat at that table and where we will be able to fit in. Now, God, we, we thank you so much for our ability to be a church family where we can all love and care about each other with no strings attached. See, that's the great thing, God, about family like this. Because we can turn around and we can accept someone for who they are and welcome them with open arms 
with no strings attached, with no, okay, now what's in it for me? No. We do it out of love and out of respect for your creation, oh God, for your children. So we thank you for giving us giving us that, that ability, that, that, that openness to be able to share your love with those around us. So God, we ask you to be with our sister Mary and her son John as Mary has been having a bout with losing family. And now John is being diagnosed terminal with a brain bleed. We just ask that you be able to give the doctors the ability to find a cure to stop this bleed and if it is your will then let him pass into your glory into your home comfortably whatever your will is O oh god we know that your will will be done we ask you to be with margaret continue to strengthen her as she still fights with her loss we just ask that if she feels that it's time and she feels that she needs to come back let her know that we will accept her and love her unconditionally we ask you to be with Laurie and her family as at the loss of her brother just ask you to comfort and console the family and may they find peace in his passing. We ask you, O oh God, to, to be with your creation, our pets, as they too suffer from different pains and illnesses. And, and we thank you, O oh God, for the veterinarians that how, how, how they can treat a patient that can't tell them what's wrong, yet they can figure it out. We have to, we have to our, our hats have to be off to them. That is a special, special touch that they have. We just ask that you protect our pets because they become part of our family and we love them unconditionally, just like they, they love us. ask you to heal them, keep them safe, and keep them loved. We ask you to be with Kathy and her family as they've also had many losses, and to be with Linda and Todd as they battle these cancers that they have. We know that Linda is very, very, very terminal ill. We just ask you, oh God, that if it be your will, let her slip through these bounds of earth into your kingdom comfortably. And we ask you to help Todd as he is still trying to find a way to cure his cancer of the brain. And may they get over to Germany where the surgery can take place and get their healthy, well, get there safely and return safely and healthy. We ask you to be with Paula and Jerry as Paula went through 
surgery on the brain to remove tumors that could be cancer. And we ask you to be with Jerry who had a lump removed from her breast. We just ask for healing, strengthening, and encouragement as they work on getting better again. God, all of these things we ask through the name of your son, who was the great healer, the great physician here on earth, and had everybody fitting in. And we thank you, O oh God, for his sacrifices for us. And as he taught us the words that when asked to pray, he gave us these words by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is also a, a very joyful, I know, not too many people think so, but it's very much a joyful thing to be able to give back some of the gifts that our Lord and Savior gives us. So I'll ask our ushers if they would please come forward and accept us, help us with today's tithes and offerings. Oh God, bless the gifts and bless the givers. Amen. Amen. God, we offer you these gifts. May they be used to strengthen your kingdom here on earth. May they be used to feed the hungry, dress the naked, house the poor. God, we ask all this through your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing if you wish. And open your faith, we sing. <laughs> gotcha. I'm just testing everybody. Uh, you were, good yes, test. Uh, to uh, page 2158. 2158. Jesus, we 
I was waiting to walk closer to the Lord. Mark played with the Lord a little while ago. Yeah. That's okay. Well, so our service here today has ended. But our service in the world does not end. Go into the world, share the light, share the love, share the joy, share the miracles that God has done in your lives and is still doing. And get someone to fit in, to be part of your lives. What a great place it can be. And go in peace. May the Lord go with you always. Amen. Amen. Sorry, that's not the right. No, stop. Excuse me. One second. We'll move down to.